Welcome to part 2 of the series on Louis XIV. We are picking up where we left off in the previous video. On June 7, 1654, Louis XIV's coronation took place in the Cathedral of Rheims. After his coronation, the young king spent several months at the front of the Franco-Spanish War. This war had been going on since 1635 as part of the Thirty Years' War. Louis XIV was present at the Battle of Atrecht and in June 1655 he led his troops in Hainaut. In 1658 France's northern border was threatened again. Although Louis XIV wanted to personally lead the siege of Dunkirk, it was Marshal Turin who led the French army. The army's advantage in Flanders posed a serious danger to the Spanish Netherlands. During the military campaign in the Spanish Netherlands, Louis XIV contracted scarlet fever and was bedridden at the front for more than two weeks. After 25 years of war, France and Spain signed the Peace of the Pyrenees Treaty in 1659. The treaty also ended the aspirations of the Grand Condé, who had tried to conquer the French throne with Spanish help. Six months later, the Grand Condé reconciled with the king. Furthermore, the treaty assigned a large area expansion to France. Part of the agreement was a marriage of Louis XIV to the Spanish Infanta Maria Theresia, who was a first cousin of Louis on both paternal and maternal side. Mazarin forced Louis to marry her, although Louis was in love with Maria Mancini, Mazarin's niece. Mazarin's insistence created a growing tension between the cardinal and the king. Nevertheless, on June 9, 1660, the wedding between Louis XIV and Maria Theresia took place in the church of Saint-Jean-de-Luz. Six children were born as a result of the union between Louis and Maria Theresia. Louis, le grand dauphin, the only child to reach adulthood, Anne-Elisabeth, Marie-Anne, Marie-Thérèse, la petite madame, Philippe Charles and Louis-François. A link to a video on the life of Maria Theresia can be found in the upper right corner, right now. Peace with the Spaniards would prove to be Cardinal Mazarin's last political trick. Mazarin died on March 9, 1661, at the age of 58. Louis XIV inherited the great wealth that the Cardinal had accumulated over the past decades as Prime Minister. Instead of appointing a successor for Mazarin, Louis XIV personally took power and downgraded the Conseil d'Anot, in English the High Council, to merely an advisory council. Jean-Baptiste Colbert showed himself to be a willing servant of the monarch and together they conceived a plan to overthrow Minister Nicolas Fouquet, who was too powerful in the eyes of Louis XIV. Dealing with Fouquet was difficult, because Fouquet was legally untouchable as Attorney General. Thanks to Colbert's efforts, the king managed to persuade Fouquet to sell his position as Attorney General. The way was now cleared to arrest Fouquet, which was done by D'Artagnan in September 1661. He was then transferred to the castle of Angers. The trial against Fouquet lasted for three years, but the outcome was not as Louis XIV had hoped. Fouquet was found guilty of improper management of the treasury, but he was not convicted for treason. However, the former minister was nonetheless imprisoned, which showed courtiers how dangerous it was to want to outshine Louis XIV. From the beginning of his actual reign as king in 1661, Louis XIV placed high importance on public relations. The nickname, the Sun King, was heavily promoted from 1662 onwards. Louis XIV chose the Sun as an emblem because it illuminates everything and the Sun is the one thing on which everyone depends. In 1663, Louis XIV founded the Petite Académie. The Académie was described by Colbert as an institution for the preservation of the splendor of the king's deeds. This was the start of the largest propaganda campaign of the early modern period. Under the government of Colbert and Louis XIV, French trade noticed a significant growth. This led, among other things, to the establishment of companies such as the Manufacture des Gobelins. The economy was also further protected by the doubling of import tariffs for foreign products, so-called Colbertisme. 
These protective measures were primarily intended to counteract the intrusive trade of the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands in France, which had inflicted much bad blood with French traders and manufacturers. Louis XIV was therefore keen to match the maritime and colonial power of the Republic and England. That is why the Compagnie des Indes was founded in 1664. Progress was also made in terms of law and order, with the appointment of the Paris police chief Gabriel Nicolas de la Reynie. In 1667, partly due to the efforts of Colbert, a new civil code was introduced in France, the Code Louis. In 1670, a criminal code followed, the Ordonnance Criminelle. In 1665, the Queen Mother, Anne of Austria, fell seriously ill. The doctors diagnosed Anne with breast cancer. She died on January 20th and the Sun King mourned her passing deeply. Because of her death and the fact that Spain couldn't pay the dowry promised for his marriage with Maria Theresia, Louis toyed with the idea of waging war against Spain again. This ends the second part of the five-part biography of Louis XIV. In my next video, I will talk about the wars waged by Louis XIV, the persecution of the Huguenots, and the first signs of health problems suffered by the king. Hopefully, you'll join me. See you next week.